Okay, class, this video, we are going to talk about 5.3, Venn diagrams and set operations. And there are 20 problems in this um, assignment. So for number one, it says, describe a universal set U that includes all elements in the given sets. So A is purple, white, green, B is gray. There may be some other options that are not in set A and B, which makes the universal set. Now, the one thing that we notice that all of these elements have in common is that they are all colors. So the universal set would be the set of all colors. Now for number two, it says, let the universal set be one through 20 and let the set C be one through 13, all the odd numbers. It says, use the roster method to write the set C complement. That's what this little apostrophe means. It means the complement of C. And a complement means everything in the universal set that is not C, okay? So you basically take the universal set, all the guys one through 20, and you take out the elements from set C. So what I've done is I've written out the elements of U and then I've just taken out one, taken out three, taken out five, taken out seven, take out nine, take out 11, and take out 13. And then I list what's left. So we're left with two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And this is the complement of C. So for number three, if U is again, all the numbers one through 20, C is all the numbers one through 19. It says use the roster method to write the set. So it's basically the universal set minus the C set. And so notice that these are all the odd numbers from one to 19. So all, if I remove those from one through 20, all I'm gonna be left with is the even numbers from uh, one through 20, which are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Now, number four, says find the set A intersect B, okay? So the universal set is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A is two, three, four, seven, and B is two, three, three. Now understand that two, three, three is the same thing as just saying two, three. You don't need to list the same element more than one time, okay? And they both have the same cardinal number because a cardinal number is the number of distinct elements. And so these two are not distinct. You would just, but three is distinct from two. So you only have two distinct elements in this set of three elements. You also have two distinct elements in this set of two elements. So these two things are equivalent and they are equal too, because every number in this set is in this set and vice versa. It's just three happens to appear twice pointlessly in this set. Um, I'm sure it was in there just to throw you off. But anyway, it says A intersect B. Well, A intersect B is the elements both in A and in B. So it's what they both share, okay? So the intersection is what they both have and they both have a two and they both have a three. And so that's the set A intersect B. Now it says to find the set A union B. So the universal set is one through eight. A is one, two, four, six. B is three, two, eight. And it wants us to find the union. Well, the elements, the union means the elements in A or B. Okay, and since, oh God, I have the hiccups out of nowhere. Since I'm talking about the elements in A or B, we're gonna list all of the elements together. So one, two, three is here, four, no five, six, no seven, and eight. And those are the elements in both, not in both, in A or B, okay? So notice that one is in A, two is in both of them, three is in B, four is in A, six is in A, and eight is in B. It just has to be in one of those numbers. Notice that I would not put five or seven in this list because five and seven are not in either of those. 
and we're talking about the elements that are in one or the other. So for number six, your universal set is six through 12, all those counting numbers. A is the set six, eight, nine, 10. And it says use the roster method to write the set A complement. So remember, we were doing this before. I don't know why there's another one in there randomly. But you take the universal set and you take out all the elements of A. So that means I'm going to take out six. I'm going to take out eight, nine, and 10. And that's going to leave me with seven, 11, and 12. So this is the complement of A. Number seven says find uh, A complement intersect with B complement. So here's the universal set, here's set A, here's set B. First thing I did was find the complements and then I could find the intersection. So the complement of A would be one, two, three, because those are not in A. Um, four, five, six, seven are there in A. So the complement is just gonna be one, two, three. If I go to the universal set and I take out these elements, three, four, seven, what I'm gonna have left is one, two, three is out, four is out, five I will have, six I will have, and seven is out. So then these are my complements. And if you're finding the intersection of these two complements, you're only gonna list the items that they have in common. And so they both have one and two in common. And so that's the intersection there. Now, number eight says, um, find the set A union B complement. Now, the thing with um, set operations is that you do have to do what's in the parentheses first. If not, you just go from left to right, okay? So, and you always need to do complements first, unless they're outside the parentheses, then you do that afterward. So like in this particular case, the complements were not in parentheses. So I took those complements first and then did this operation in between them. Here though, the complement is outside the parentheses. So I do have to do my union first and then I can take the complement of that. So if U is one through seven, A is two, four, six, seven, and B is one, four, seven. A union B means all the elements in A and all the elements of B written together. So that means I have one, two, four, six, and seven. So there they all are. Then if I'm gonna take the complement of that, I basically look at U and I remove all of these numbers. So what that will do is the one is out, two is out, three will be left over, four is out, five will be left over, um, and six is out and seven is out. And so the only two numbers that I'm left with are one and two. I'm sorry, are three and five. I was looking up there, but this was the problem we were doing. And I forgot, no, that's right. Okay, so for number nine, it says the set A, find the set A union, the empty set. U is one through eight, A is four, six, seven, eight. Now A union, the empty set means what, listing both of their elements together. But if the empty set doesn't have any elements, then there's nothing to put together with A. So you're basically gonna end up with A itself which is four, six, seven, eight. Now for number 10, it says find the set of A intersect with the empty set. Well, the empty set doesn't have anything in it. So it definitely cannot have these things in common with something that has nothing in it. So they have nothing in common, which means you will have nothing to include in the set. So the set will be empty or the null set. Now here we have use the Venn diagram to represent set A in roster form. So all the elements in A are gonna be all the elements in this circle. And that's two, six, eight, and 10. Now number 12 says use the Venn diagram above to represent U in roster form. Now U is everything in the whole box. So two, six, eight, 10, 13, 18, 21, 22, and 27, all the elements. 
Number 13 says use the Venn diagram above to represent the set A intersect B. Remember, A intersect B is the elements that both A and B have in common. And that happens to be these two guys right here, which are 8 and 10. Number 14 says use the Venn diagram above to represent the set A union B complement in roster form. So we are A union B, we need to figure that out first, okay? So if I'm doing A union B complement, that means the universal set minus A union B. So we first have to go figure out what the heck is A union B before we can figure out its complement. So A union B is going to be everything in A and everything in B. So it's basically everything in both of the circles and don't list anybody twice. So 2, 6, 8, 10, 13, 18, and 21, and that's all of them there. And if you remove these from the universal set, the only guys you're gonna be left with are 22 and 27. Now, use the Venn diagram to represent the set A intersect B uh, complement in roster form. So again, I have to find the complement first. So A itself is again, two, six, eight, ten. 10. B complement would be everything outside of B. So here's B, everything outside of it would be the two, six, the 22 and the 27. And so those are the four guys. Those are the four guys you see here, two, six, 22 and 27. And so then of these two sets, A and then B complement, what do they have in common? They have the two in common and they have the six in common. And so that's their intersection is just two, six. Now 16 doesn't use the diagram. It says set A contains 10 letters and five numbers. Set B contains nine letters and nine numbers. Um, seven letters and two numbers are common to both sets A and B. Find the number of elements in set A or set B. Okay. It says find the number of elements in set A or set B. That's the union. So they're asking me for the number of elements in A union B. Well, there's a formula and you need to have this on your note sheet. You can find this value by doing the number of entries in set A plus the number of elements in set B minus the number of elements in both A and B so that you don't count those elements twice, right? Because they're in A and they're in B you don't wanna count them twice. You only wanna count them once. So they'll get counted when you add these two together. They'll get counted here once and then here twice, and then you're gonna remove the second batch. Um, now I did it the long way and then I shortened it. <laughs> so I said, if the first one, A, has 10 letters and five numbers, well, guess what? That's 15 elements, right? And if B has nine letters and nine numbers, then that's 18 elements. And if seven, if the, and if it has seven letters and two numbers in common, then that's uh, nine elements. And so basically we should be able to calculate this. So if you have five, 15 plus 18 minus nine, you're gonna end up with 24 elements. And I try to write it there, 15 plus 18 minus nine, but it's like super, super tiny. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so you can't see it still. It's five plus 15 minus 18 or 15 plus 18 minus nine. So you basically end up with 10 letters plus nine letters minus seven letters, which is here. And then five numbers plus nine numbers minus two numbers, which is here. So that ends up giving me 12 letters and 12 numbers, which is still 24 elements, okay? Um, doing it the longer way actually lets me know how many numbers specifically and how many uh, letters specifically, but it really didn't ask me that. It just asked me the number of elements. Okay, moving on. So I have uh, four more problems. So here it says 17, a math tutor working with a small group of students asked each student when he or she had studied for class the previous weekend. Their responses are shown in the Venn diagram. Use the Venn diagram 
to list the set of students who studied Saturday or Sunday in roster form. So um, this is the Venn diagram and it says who studied on Saturday or Sunday. So these are the people that studied Saturday and these are the people that studied Sunday. So if I'm gonna include the people that studied Saturday or Sunday, it's gonna be all of them. Hannah, Sarah, Josh, Brian, Mary, and Taylor. Now, who studied Saturday on Saturday and not Sunday? So remember, these are the guys that studied on both. Hannah is the only one that studied on Saturday, but not Sunday. And then finally, number 19, totally different problem. It says the bar graph on the next page shows the percentage of students at a local high school with preferences for various careers. Career E is elementary school teacher, P is police officer, V is banker, S is surgeon, A is airline pilot, F is family doctor, and L is lawyer. Use the graph to place the airline pilot career in the correct region of the Venn diagram. Also on the next page, where U is the set of careers. Um, oh, is the region of, yeah. Um, A is the set of careers for which more than 20% of students are considering as a career. And B is the set of careers for which more than 20% of the students are not considered considering as a career. So what I've done here is here's the graph and then this is my work. Okay, well actually they gave us this and then I wrote this and then I uh, answered the question, okay? So the graph is this and then blue is they're considering it as a major, uh, purple is they're not considering it as a career and then green is no preference, okay? So for the first one, I'm going to be looking at the blue and then I'm going to be looking at the purple. Now. Here's the universal set. So you've got A is the set of people who are, what did it say A was? A is the set of careers for which more than 20% of students considering as a career. So here's the box for considering as a career and here's 20%. All the people who are above that marker in this red marker in all of the blue columns above this marker fit category A. So that means this one, which is P, this one, which is for B, this one, which is for S, this one for A, this one for F, and this one for L. So all the elements of A are here. Now for B, it says B is the set of careers for which more than 20% of students are not considering. So now I'm looking at the purple. And again, I'm saying more than 20% not considering. So which are the purple bar graphs that are above this red line? It's going to be this one, which is E, this one, which is B, and this one, which is um, L, not F. I don't know why that says F. F is not more than, it looks like it's exactly 12. I'm sorry, exactly 20, but it's not more than 20. Um, and then it says, in which region does the airline pilot career belong? Um, it looks like the airline, which is A, is here, but it's only in set A. It is not in set B at all. So since it's only in set B, and I'll just make an observation here too, U is all of them. E, P, B, S, A, F, and L is the universe, universal set. Um, since it's in A, but not in B, then that would mean it has to be in this category here, okay? Um, so A, the airline pilot, is in set A and in region one. That would make it in A only, I should say in A only. Now, last question, we tried to squish it in here, Let's see. So it says a winter resort took a poll of its 300 visitors to see which winter activities people enjoyed. The results were as follows. 
145 people like to ski, 171 people like to snowboard, and 71 people like to ski and snowboard. How many people in the poll like to ski or snow snowboard? So it does tell me if you let A equal the people who like to ski, right? Then and then let B equal the people who like to snowboard then the cardinal number for A is going to be 45, 145 since 145 people like to ski. The cardinal number for B is going to be um, 71, or actually 171, since 171 people like to snowboard. Now, the 71, though, is for people who like to ski and snowboard, which means the intersection. So ski is A, snowboard is B, it's A intersect B, okay? And that number is 71. Now, what it's asking us for is the number of people who like to ski or snowboard. And when you use the word or, that's a union, okay? So it's asking me how many people like to ski or snowboard. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the, the cardinal number of A union B. That's what I wanna find, okay? Now, there is a formula to find that. Um, in order for you to find the cardinal number of A union B, it would be the cardinal number of A plus the cardinal number of B minus the cardinal number of A intersect B. And I have all three of those values. So it's 145 plus 171 minus 71, which gives me 245. So the cardinal number of A union B is 245. 245 people like to snowboard or ski. Um, and that is the end of this particular section. I will see you guys in the next video.